Welcome to Crashing Maya. I'm Alex, and I wanted to revisit uh, booleans, uh, polygon booleans. Uh, there are some other things I want to show, and just maybe clarify some of the things I showed in my previous video. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, first thing, we need an object to start with. So let's use a sphere like this. Let's make it nice and dense. Uh, this should be good enough. And then let's use an object to boolean with. So I'm going to rotate this. There we go. Uh, so before you start boolean uh, your objects, you want to make sure to turn on uh, wireframe unshaded. So it's this button here. So by turning on uh, wireframe unshaded, uh, we can see the wireframe on our objects without having to select them. Um, and what you need, what you have to do is basically make sure that you have geometry that's matching. And this object and this object need to match in geometry. Now, sometimes it's hard to figure this out. And <coughs> what you can do is figure out if you have the right uh, geometry on the first object. Uh, to do that, what we can do is actually <coughs> use the heads of display in Maya. So if we go to display, heads of display, and turn on poly count, this will give us this, uh, some information up here on the left. And w if you have an object selected, it'll tell you how many faces, edges, tries, and whatever it has. But we can also uh, make a selection and it'll tell us what we have selected. So in this column here, it says we have six edges selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and pick out a nice clean square around where the boolean is going to happen and see how many edges this will give us. And what I'm doing is I'm clicking and then shift clicking and it completes the loop. So there we go, we have this selected and this is telling us that we have 24 edges selected. That means our object that we're uh, trying to boolean into should have about 24 edges for it to work very nicely. Uh, this way we can easily connect uh, all of the edges. So I'm going to select my original object, uh, my actual my cylinder, and set the subdivision axis to 24. Now, if you have an object that doesn't have construction history, uh, you can add loops. And uh, this is something you will have to do, and if you don't do it, it'll be really hard to uh, figure this stuff out, figure out where things connect. So, uh, having said that, uh, we can start our boolean and I'll show you quickly how to clean this up. So I'm going to select this object and this one go to mesh boolean. I'm going to open up the options for union and by default this will be set to normal and I like to use edge. Uh, it deletes the interior faces. Sometimes normal does not and you'll get you see the uh, on the bottom here you can see there's a the remaining sphere and I don't want that so I'm going to set it to edge and then click apply and this is our completed object. We have the original uh, transform history from the, the two objects, the cylinder and the sphere, and we can move them and our boolean will update. Uh, we don't want to do that by accident, so I'm going to select the new resulting object and shift alt D, which will delete the history and get rid of those two objects there. Uh, now we can start connecting. And what I like to do is actually delete things that uh, get in the way. So like things like this. These edges, I know that I'm going to connect from here to here because th there's a connection already uh, down this edge loop and this one, so I don't want to mess with that. But these are going into the center of this face, these edges, and so is this one. So I'm going to delete them. I'm not going to delete everything because I want to be able to control uh, or if I delete too much, it'll be hard to figure it out. So control delete will delete them. Then I can use the multi-cut tool. Oh, I missed one. Uh, multi-cut tool. And I will now just drag, drag, right click to finish. Drag, drag, right click. And keep going. And for this one, 
<coughs> all I'm going to do is drag here and go all the way to this point. We'll clean this up after. And I'm just right clicking to finish. Now I'm going to double click this loop and this one. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm going to delete them. But there's a way that we want to delete this. And that's just hitting, hitting backspace with or delete without holding control. This will leave a vertex right on the edge where it was connected and will preserve some of the curvature that we had. And now I'm going to use uh, the multi cut tool again. And this time I'm going to draw a loop from here to here, but curving it around our. Uh, s s cylinder here. So I'm going to start and just kind of imagine where it goes. Now, if you're not sure, you can always use a guide uh, by just uh, go to go into curve, select the EP curve tool. I'm going to snap here and then snap here like this. And then from this view, I'm going to go to control vertex, move this up until I like the curvature here. I'm going to use the multi cut tool now and whoops, let's delete this. Uh, let's make sure we select our object here. And just match the curve. Good. Now we can do the same on the bottom. Now I don't need a guide for this, but you can always make one for yourself. And I also want to make one on this side and the other side. Basically, we're trying to keep all the faces uh, the same size or as close as possible to the same size. Um, so this is why we're doing this. This will give us nice, clean, smooth geometry. Sometimes if you don't do this, you will get either pinching or uh, weird uh, uh, lighting effects that you don't intend. OK. And now I'm going to double click these lines here the edge loops and delete without holding control so it keeps the curvature see that <coughs> and now I'm going to go in and actually redraw a loop around now the reason I can't use insert insert edge loop is because I have points uh, along the way that are that will break the insert edge loop tool, so I have to do this by hand. You can also use, um, you can make a NURBS curve and project it onto the surface, but I found that it doesn't always work reliably and sometimes creates some bad geo. So uh, the amount of cleanup you, s you sometimes will have to do uh, kind of outweighs the benefits and it's easier and faster just to do it manually like this. Oh. So if you mess up, just hit backspace until you get through, uh, until you go back to where you messed up, and then you can restart. Then right click, finish that. So now I'm going to select all the vertices that are surrounding the area where I uh, was cleaning up the geo and then hit delete. So this will delete any kind of stranded vertices and leave all the ones that are connected. Now I'm going to select the insert edge loop tool, set it to equal distant and drop a loop here. Now if this happens that means we have a break somewhere and if I press 3 you can see we do have a break. So that just means that when we uh, did our boolean the tolerance was very low uh, which means that it didn't merge 
all the vertices so all we can have to do is just click merge that should fix it now we can see it's nice and clean and if it still didn't merge all you have to do is go into the poly merge vert in the inputs and change the distance to something larger than the default and if the default is too high and other things will get merged you just need to go in and set the distance lower drop a loop here we actually don't need the faces here And if we turn off uh, wireframe unshaded and deselect, we can see our result in geometry. If we hit three, we don't need that curve. So we can see it's nice and clean. There are some issues, but the problem with uh, booleans or combining different uh, objects together is that you have to have enough geometry in your original. Um, in your objects so that when you subdivide they don't create weird uh, uh, <coughs> weird geometry flows so uh, if you didn't want this to happen you just need to use a denser object to begin with okay so now I'm going to show you something else uh, sometimes you want to boolean things in and you want to uh, have a bevel like we made here but it's kind of hard to do it when uh, after you do the boolean so there's something you can do so to kind of speed up the process i'm going to use this cube I'm on a boolean let's say like a doorway or a window uh, into this uh, the side of the sphere here so i'm going to go to mesh and just do a uh, sorry edit mesh is it edit mesh where is it ah bevel tool <coughs> And just make a uh, an object like this. So I want to boolean uh, this shape into uh, this uh, sphere, but I want to have a nice bevel uh, so that I can add uh, a, a, so I can extrude inward. Now I can boolean and then go in and add the bevel and stuff, but I can also do it beforehand on the actual object I'm going to use the boolean with. So I'm going to select the outside faces here uh, actually uh, we can select the inside face and delete it faster so we just have a, an open shell like this uh, then I'm going to click extrude and just do an offset I'm sorry thickness and add the as thick a bevel as we want like that that should work well and then I'm going to look at my geometry, look at the wireframe, and see where I need to drop uh, loops. So I know that I need to drop one here, and one, two, three on the sides. So I'm going to select my Insert Edge Loop tool, set it to Multi, click one, click once here, once here, then set this to three, and drop three here, and three here. So now I'm going to select both objects, Mesh, Boolean union and delete history. Now, all I need to do to basically uh, put our predetermined bevel on this uh, sphere is double click this edge loop and this one and control delete. There we go. You can see it drop down. I'm going to select the faces on the inside. I'm going to select the interior faces and do uh, shift greater than. This will grow my selection and delete. But I can also see I have a couple faces. See the little uh, flicker you see in those lines? That means there's a, a couple faces there. I'm going to delete those. See? And then delete those. Uh, now we can clean this up very easily, actually. So I'm going to go in and delete edges that are not connected and leave, leave the ones that are. And like last time, we had an issue where some of the edges that were meeting in the center, uh, meeting meeting together when connected so if we press 3 you can see see that's not connected so I'm going to go into object mode select merge just to make sure it's merged one, zero, one. Like that. and let's start connecting OK, 
Okay, and let's delete any remaining vertices like so. Now, I see that there's a pentagons here, right? And we do want quads to have all the time, but sometimes pentagons are okay if you will be subdividing. So if we subdivide this, it will actually fix the pentagons. And if we do that, you can see it fixed it. But if you're not doing that, and you want to be able to use this geometry without subdividing, uh, it's actually pretty easy to fix it. Um, we have four pentagons, means that we can actually connect two of them together and two of them together to make quads. I'm going to do it very simply. I'm going to hold shift, drop it here, drop one here, drop one there, like that. Uh, oops. I messed up on this last edge. Control delete. Just redo it. And then, because we'll have some uh, pinching here, I'm going to just spread this out a little bit. And the same on this side. So now we already have a bevel built in because we, when we booleaned it, we uh, had it uh, in our object and we're free to extrude. Have a nice clean bevel. The geometry flows nicely around it. So you can do this with a lot more with very complicated shapes uh, just make sure you extrude your geometry uh, using thickness uh, this will give you a nice bevel to work with and you don't have to go in and draw it by hand uh, like we did here all right uh, that's it if you have any questions or comments uh, leave them uh, below and if you have suggestions for things you want me to cover uh, please leave it in the comments thank you